I, I'd love to welcome Nikki and Stella onto the stage with us here. Give them a round of applause. Now, I understand you have family here in Scotland. Yeah, I'm a Scot born and bred, and uh, all my immediate family are here in Scotland, as is Nicky's, though he's a Sassanac. But um, I won't say that. <laughs> they chose to come and live here. <laughs> <laughs> but the really exciting thing is our youngest son, Josh, just got married in April last year, and he met and fell in love with his wife, Ailsa, here in Edinburgh. And that mirrored my parents meeting and falling in love 61 years ago here in Edinburgh. They caught it up and down George Street. And uh, so I feel very at home here. Great. Well, thank you again for coming. Um, you've done hundreds of interviews like this. But just after Christmas, you were interviewed by The Guardian. Can you tell us about how that came about? Well, some of you may have read of in the press, Sir Paul Coleridge, who's one of the High Court judges in the Family Division, seen so much of the pain from family breakdown over the years and knew that the root cause of it was the breakdown of marriage. He started the Marriage Foundation and asked us to speak at their one-year anniversary. Uh, at that gathering, there was a journalist from The Guardian. And a bit later, uh, the editor of The Guardian was saying, there's been so much bad news about marriage. Uh, is there any good news we could report? And this journalist stuck up her hand and said, well, well I heard some good news about the marriage cause. So that's how, the, uh, that's how the interview came about. And what has the uh, impact been afterwards? Have you been surprised at that? Yes, and it's been really exciting to hear from around the country as well as in our own course. We had an email this week from a couple who run the marriage course in Abingdon, and um, they said that as a result of the Guardian article, their course, this new course starting 2014 last week, doubled from uh, four couples to eight couples. And our course, um, we just started two weeks ago, which has 103 couples on it, wow. and, m and, and a large number of those are not Christians. Um, we have already um, know of a number of couples who've come as a result of the Guardian article. And um, we, I met one man at the end of the first evening. He said, thank you so much for putting on this course. Our marriage is hanging by a thread. We're really, really grateful to be here. But obviously, as you know, um, well, some of you will know, the marriage course aims to um, give an opportunity for people with good marriages to invest and strengthen their marriage. And there's, I think the attitude is changing now in the country. People are beginning to realize the need for prevention rather than cure. And Andrew Salou, MP, said just last week, courses like the marriage course um, need to be seen to, to be like going to the gym rather than going to the surgery. And we thought, yes, that's it. Great. Uh, and again, as you probably know, many of the people who come on the marriage course, parenting courses, this is the first thing they do in a church. And then many of them come, they do Alpha and come to Christ. That's great. Yeah. Um, so you've been doing a lot of traveling, uh, traveling not just around the UK, but traveling around the world. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've been doing? Yeah, the, the most recent exciting thing is the interest um, from the Catholic Church in the marriage course. In Italy, in the last 18 months, 100 marriage courses have started all over Italy in the Catholic Church. And as a result, um, Archbishop Paglia, who is president of the Pontifical Council for the Family, um, invited us to go to Rome last week. Uh, he wanted to know more about the marriage course. And I think this is a result of the Pope Francis, um, the, one of the first things he did as Pope was to call an extraordinary synod for the whole church to discuss marriage and family life. So we're really excited, they're really interested, and we are wanting to work in, well, it's already happening in Catholic churches around the world, mm -hmm. but we're now really working together with them. That's great. And then lots happening in Asia as well, uh, with the Chinese government endorsing the marriage course. That's been amazing, and the marriage prep course. And what's what it's meant is that churches are picking up the course, running it, and many who aren't Christians coming to do the course. And there was one Chinese man who said to us, uh, we met him subsequently after he'd done the marriage course, and he, he came from a Buddhist background. He said, I realized this course is about a love that is transcendent. And he started to talk to the leader of the course, who was a Christian, and he was baptized last April. So there are many people in Asia, in other places, who are coming to Christ as a result of these courses. Fantastic. 
Now, you're running a session this afternoon. Yep, we're going to be talking more about how the marriage course, marriage preparation course, and the parenting courses can reach out into the community. Uh, we're seeing amazing things happening in some schools around the country. Sometimes people running these courses in homes, having a waiting list, and how these courses connect with Alpha, mm -hmm. drawing people into the church and drawing people to Christ. Fantastic. Thank you. Paul. Thanks so much. Uh, just, yeah, it's just so important. We see these things built into the life of the church that we're, we're whole life disciples, not just uh, going through the Bible, but we're actually making whole life disciples. Bonnie, um, you've got this amazing title of um, Global Director. I can't even comprehend how it, you could be a Global Isn't Alpha that Director. <laughs> That's a funny job. Um, where have you been recently? Well, let's see, in the last two months, I've been in Costa Rica and then straight to Sweden, and not lots of people do that flight, and that's because it's a very Costa long Rica journey. Sweden. Don't do that okay. one. Um, and then went from there to South Africa, and then the Netherlands, and then this month I'm off to Singapore and Malaysia with Sandy and Annette. So wow, a few spots global traveler, around the world. fantastic. Yeah. So what are you encouraged by as you travel the world in this okay. very large and diverse family? There's 170 countries Alpha's yeah. running in. What, what are you encouraged by? I'm going to take that extra country as a word of knowledge. 170, right 69, 169. 69 to 170. We all heard it here. Um, the big story is God is on the move, and that is the only story. Mm. And one of the ways that we see that happening is because Alpha continues to grow. So you saw that as of last May, and we do our statistics kind of in time for every May, was 22.5 million, yep. and that was 19% growth. Check the board. So conservatively, we estimate that at the end of this term, 24 million people will have heard the good news about Jesus on an Alpha course in 100, almost 120 languages all around the world. Fantastic. And it feels more or less like we're clinging on to God's coattails, and he I is love moving that Louis at a Giglio. very rapid yeah. rate. I love what Louis Giglio said, that we make, we make these films, but we've really no idea what God's doing exactly through Alpha right. and many other things as well. It's That's remarkable. Right. How does the family stay together? Is, you know, it's very diverse. What's, I know we've changed the branding and things. And actually, that's, that's a really good example of how the family does stay together. I think our real clear focus we've come to over the last 12 months, maybe 14 months of working on innovating Alpha is who are we trying to reach, not just here in Scotland or even trying to think about the UK, but what does that mean in 169 families for the Alpha Global family? How do we do that together? And we focused in on the urban 24-year-old male. Primarily two reasons. One, this is the group that globally is furthest away from the church, and two, that they are the most socially connected group. So if we reach the Christian in this demographic, they are the best to reach their non-Christian outside of church. So basically, we're going for the hardest to reach group. That's it. Good idea. Who, who would ever want to go for a small Absolutely. vision, so we're right? For the That's boring. We have no interest in that. Let's go for the big so vision. So lots of folks and lots of other things, but we're going to try and really reach into that. Exactly. So if you're in that generation and can help us reach it, and then that spread from there, that's going to be well, fantastic. There's lots to do. So that's one of the biggest challenges. Hmm. And the branding, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. is part of that. And so people liking that, that question mark at 45 degree it's thing. It's been so much fun to see what's happening with that. So when I was in Costa Rica and then went to South Africa right after that, and seeing from the transition from, you know, a, a wonderful brand for the time, but a Caucasian man with baggy trousers, to this question mark that really does demonstrate mm -hmm. that we're all carrying our own questions. And so seeing it reflected so easily across the family, you know, in Costa Rica, there's no doubt that was the exact same brand, the same family as then when I was in South Africa. So they're swapping and they're different people, yeah, they're different that's questions. Exactly. The questions and the, the brand the stays family. the same. You can see so, how the family so fits together. it looks together. the same over exactly. the whole world. How can we join in? Like mm. We're miles away from Costa Rica and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Although I know some people here have been out in Russia doing alpha training. It's amazing. Yes. And we're so grateful and to Mexico, all of you that have. All sorts of places. So how yeah. can... Where can we pray? How can we support? How can so I we guess there's a couple things. Um, continue to pray with God being on the move. We just want to make sure that we're following in his footsteps. And um, there's a lot to do. And so we'd love to have you partner with us in giving and supporting what's happening with Alpha around the world. And I guess the third area is that we'd love you to be involved with training. Paul mentioned this. But where we really see the need is that churches all over the UK have mission partners. They've got people in their church from different countries. They're connected with missions around the world. We'd love to give you the resources so that you can go and train them on how to run Alpha. 
We might not even know them, but you do, and we'd love to give you what you need so that you can get to them. Fantastic. That's Thanks right. so much, Bonnie. Now we're going to find out firsthand from the furthest travel delegate here today, Berna. It's really exciting. Um, I got to chat with Berna yesterday and find out a little bit more about what's happening in Uganda. Um, and it's great you can tell us firsthand. Would you like a remark? We're not keen on giving people mics. Um, so you've traveled the furthest to be here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your personal involvement in Alpha and any uh, stories over the past year? Great. Um, thank you. Uh, I started with Alpha in, um, in an administrative role. I didn't know anything about Alpha, but I was helping with the Alpha office. But after that, I got to love Alpha. And I help out with a course at, uh, at church. But I'd like to tell you a story about an Alpha course that's happening in a girls' boarding school that uh, we visit and, you know, hang out with the girls sometimes. And um, one of the things that we're seeing happening, you know, on Alpha, and w which is the same thing happening here, was that girls are coming. And, you know, everyone grows up as a Christian. So 85% um, of Ugandans are Christian. So everyone grows up and, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, I believe in God. But what we're discovering is that young people have never been given space to actually think for themselves, you know, do I really believe in this thing? You sort of believe because everyone believes. And what we're discovering is, you know, what was happening on this course is girls asking the question, you mean God's actually real? He's actually involved in my life. And uh, this went on for about three courses. And now when they go home, the parents are coming to school and asking, what is this alpha? Because our kids can't stop talking about it. I think that's amazing. What a privilege. That sounds amazing. So um, you were explaining to me on the phone that uh, over the past three years, 15,000 young people have done alpha in Uganda. Yes. Where do you go from here? How do you, how do you better on that in 2014? Well, actually, 15,000 is nothing because we are 33 million uh, Ugandans and um, more than 71% of those are below the age of 24. So, it, I mean, that's nothing. And one of the things we felt God telling us over and over and over again is, you know, come on, you know, there's so much to be done. And so what we're aiming for is really 100,000 young people at least by 2016 should have gone through the Alpha course. And we're starting with 10,000 in 2014. Wow, that, that is a huge ambition. So what, what are you going to, what's your strategy for that? What do you need to do? Well, uh, the, the doors are already open. I mean, we have courses where people are turning away people from Alpha because they don't have, you know, enough trained people. Or, and I just think that's unacceptable. So all we're doing really is saying, you know, since the doors are already here, since the structures are already here, why don't we just equip these people to run courses? So we're starting with Alpha in high schools, and we want to um, spread Alpha wherever there is a youth worker, wherever there is a chaplain. We're going to be training them, and we're working specifically with the Anglican Church to train 500 uh, schools chaplains in high schools to run Alpha, and we're we're starting with 250 Catholic. Um, chaplains to run Alpha within a specific archdiocese in Uganda. And we're also partnering with people like Compassion, uh, Samaritan's Pass, and other NGOs that work with young people to run Alpha within those institutions. And so if there are people here who are hearing your story and they're getting very excited sitting in their seats and thinking, how can I get involved? What can we do? Well, one thing is you can do is pray. You know, you can't underestimate that. Please pray for us if, when you think about it. The other thing is, of course, we need finances to be able to do that. So for this year, we need about 35,000 pounds to be able to do that. But also, you can get involved individually with training. And Bernie already mentioned this. But we, these are huge numbers. And we need people to train others to be able to do that. And so we'll be focusing on all those things. That's great. Um, Berna's going to be around all day. So... Um do you grab her? Seminar. She's, oh, speaking in the global seminar. There we go. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much, Berna, for joining us. Okay, so we're going to bring things a bit more local. We've had some amazing stories of what's happening around the world. I'd like to invite Thomas and Ali onto the stage. Um, yep, give them a round of applause. Do we give them a microphone? Do we, we risk a microphone? Okay. Yeah. Oh, Honoured. You've been trusted. Okay, so one of the big shifts over the past year has... Uh, been the move to go younger. 
Um, and so we've got two examples in action here of uh, how churches in Scotland are doing this. Um, so thank you both for coming. Uh, Ali, start us off. Tell me, how, how did you get involved in Alpha? Yeah, so uh, I suppose after my university degree, I did a gap year uh, with my local church. And really, I suppose and through that, that? Uh, City Church in Aberdeen. And through that, I suppose I really kind of felt a kind of call to leadership and a call to kind of speaking and preaching as well. Um, so through that, I was able to kind of um, do a couple of talks at the Alpha course. And every time I went along, I kind of really felt the kind of um, excitement that people were experiencing Jesus for the first time, but also, I suppose, the kind of seriousness of just, I don't want to do anything to, to stop God doing what he's doing. Um, and so through that, I kind of did that. And then our churches, I suppose, one of the visions of it is multi-site. Um, so the person that was leading Alpha then went to pastor one of the other sites. So I was given uh, the role of uh, leading Alpha in the city centre. So... Thomas, would you say that it's been similar or has it been a bit different for you here at Central? Um, for me personally, for us, um, yeah, well, I, I kind of just got told that I was doing Alpha. So I, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so I, I lead a lot of the worship here and kind of um, join to do Alpha as well. Yeah, okay. Um, but it's just amazing, like, um, you know, we run a lot of stuff here. We've got missional communities. Everybody's really busy trying to change the city. And you kind of think, do we really need to do another Alpha course? But we keep going with it, and it's amazing the way that God moves. We, we ran a course last term, um, people being healed on the first night, and people giving their lives to Jesus after like a tiny little 10-minute talk, which doesn't really say anything. Um, um, sorry. Um, and <laughs> and that, that's when you know that God is using this tool to, to really meet with people, and so that's why we're continuing to really try and do it well. There's yeah. a challenge for you, Dave. You've got to get a convert next Thursday. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's a bit different here at Central. Um, are there um, any... Sorry, I'm uh, working with Bethany. Sorry, Ali, I'll move back to you. Um, yeah. You work with Bethany up in Aberdeen now. Yeah. Um, have you experienced any opportunities to invite any of the people that you work with along to Alpha? Yeah, I guess through, through my work there, I, I met a guy who, I suppose, I kind of was given a casework to, to work with him. And I, I tried to phone him, tried to set up a meeting, uh, wouldn't get an answer, or um, I'd set up a meeting, we'd chat on the phone, he sounded really nice, thought we'd get a bit of a click getting going. Um, never turned up to the meetings, kind of felt a little bit rejected, I suppose, a little bit. But God just kept, told me to keep persevering, and just God's faithfulness came through. And, and he, we, we worked with him, and um, I kind of managed to get him from being homeless to, to have a house. And, and then after, I suppose, maybe six months, I stopped working with him. And then kind of October last year came around, and just God put his heart on on my heart again and just reminded me of don't give up on him and he also busks in Aberdeen um, so I saw him busking and I thought oh I'm starting Alpha I better invite someone there's a great opportunity so I invited him along and uh, he came to the course and I think just through that he had a, a kind of feeling of you know just being really called back to God and God was pursuing him and I suppose just being able to be a vessel of that of, of God using him using me to to get to him again was, was amazing and a real privilege. So he became a Christian now and he's um, kind of involved in the next course. Um, he's telling everyone about Alpha and yeah, just telling people every time, just every kind of issue they have, like to pray for them and, and just laying hands on them as well. So really exciting, yeah. That's great. Thomas, um, in terms of uh, Central, um, you run one of the bigger courses here um, and it's great to see so many of the courses in Scotland growing at such a rate. Um, there'll be quite a few people here today who are representing smaller congregations and smaller courses. Mm -hmm. What can they take away from the experience that you guys are having? Um, well, I suppose we just do it really, really simply. We just do it pretty much exactly by the book, um, and we just wait for God to move in people's hearts. And we don't really take on that responsibility ourselves, you know. And so um, we really do let it be a place where people can come and ask questions, whether we're not forcing them to say anything, whether they're not... We're not forcing them to be anybody that they're not at the moment. And um, it's amazing that that really disarms people and just allows them to really be honest with themselves and, and hopefully find that Jesus is the answer, Jesus is the way, the life and the truth. Um, we've, we've tried really hard to um, kind of, there's been a team that have done it for ages and just done such a brilliant job for about 15 years, but to really get some new life into that team. So had some guys who maybe in their early 20s just graduated been meeting up in small groups but we just kind of said to them how about you invite your friends how about you run this course and so some of their friends become Christians and then some of their those guys end up leading courses and leading groups and it's just great to see it kind of take on its own life in that sense oh, definitely. Yeah. we had great. a funny story actually about finding somebody 
who came along to the course. Has anybody seen um, this program called Game of Thrones? Anybody heard of Game of Thrones? It's kind of a weird, like, Lord of the Rings kind of magazine thing. And so there's a guy in, in, on a chat room in Italy who was chatting with this girl who'd been along to church who was also in the Game of Thrones chat room. And she wasn't a Christian yet. And she said, oh, when you come to Edinburgh, because they were just, like, chatting, you should come along to church. And so he did through Game of Thrones. And he came along to church <laughs> on Sunday and then came along um, to Alpha for the whole course and said that he finally um, understood what it meant for God to be real and to have a relationship with God and has now gone back to watch more Game of Thrones. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> that was just incredible. And, that you know, just another example of just actually you just do the simple things and then God's going to work. So it's really cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Ali, just to finish this off, um, as we're moving into 2014, um, and you're heading up Alpha mm. uh, at City Church. What, what's your, um, your vision for this year? What, what are the big things you want to do? I, I guess, I suppose, kind of twofold of kind of spreading out. Um, sometimes I think Alpha, we kind of compartmentalize it a little bit and say, oh, if I'm not in the team, then that doesn't really involve me. Or if I can't tell the gospel in 60 seconds, then I'm not going to invite someone. And I guess encouraging other ministries to say, you know, this is an opportunity to, to help people to, to move in to the church to help them know and encounter Jesus. Um, so through that, so really kind of spreading out in that sense of, of just, I suppose, widening the focus and also, I suppose, um, and also with that kind of digging deeper. Um, like someone said earlier, kind of Alpha is not just a course, um, but it's it's the start of the rest of people's lives with their with their new love of Jesus. And that's what we want it to be. We don't want it to be just another course. So we really want to dig deeper and uh, to um, help people kind of grow in, into the community. So being in small groups, follow-up groups, and really just getting around people that start it and that they can continue that journey for the rest of their lives, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you both very much. Fantastic. And going younger still, uh, Karen, if you want to um, come up and... Um, I get a microphone. You can get a microphone as well. We've broken all the rules, so your coffee break's getting longer because... Shorter, actually, because we're just chatting a bit more. And uh, teenagers... How did you get into running Alpha with teenagers? I know there's not any really teenagers in the church that you're in, or not a lot. So no, there's not. My remit is children and youth, but in our actual church, there wasn't any youth. Um, we have a very good working relationship in Stirling with lots of different churches working together. One of the other ministers in the city had an opportunity to go into one of the local high schools and asked if I would come alongside him because mm -hmm. he didn't have a youth worker. And so we went in and started Youth Alpha in one of the schools, and it grew from there. Fantastic. So when does that run? How does that? We now run Youth Alpha in three different schools in Stirling. Some of them are lunchtime groups. Some of them are after-school groups. So it just depends on the dynamics of how it fits in within the school timetable and the students that we're trying to reach. And so it's kind of grown from just that one school to... How, I think somebody told me you are running four alphas at one time. Um, at one point, we were running four youth alphas. Now it's only three. Oh, <laughs> dang. And it Track has, on. Yep, keep going. Um, <laughs> it, it has been amazing. We, the first school we started in, people said, there is no way youth alpha will work in this school. And actually, we had a group of 15 students. The head teacher said, if you had lined up the entire school and selected the 15 students who are least likely to ever go to anything church-related, mm -hmm. it would be the 15 students who you now have week in, week out at Alpha. Fantastic. So God can work, Alpha can work in every type right, of school. here in Scotland. Yeah, and amen. what's the best bit then for you? The best bit is definitely seeing the young people grapple with questions of faith. We've had young people who have no church background, no experience, and young people who have been in church all of their lives come along. The ones who have no church background have had a place really just grapple is a word look at these questions of life questions of faith work out what they mean for them the young people who have been in a church and have some form of um, relationship with Jesus they come along and they say oh actually is this my faith is it my parents faith let me explore this and it's just amazing to see them all grow in fantastic some way. and I believe in one of your courses you get a sneaky peek at the new youth film series the new what youth do you think films, about that they are amazing amazing if you've not seen them you need to see them they have revolutionized the way i do youth alpha yes i like plug and play it's at all oh, the oh yeah so do you know there's a church of scotland minister up there who said he's going to run two courses one at the bbs and yeah. like one with his own youth group and stuff i completely recommend if you have not seen them make sure you see them beforehand there was a lot of prep to do and it was brilliant it was great but now anybody can do youth alpha so please if you think I would love to do it, but I can't stand and do all the speaking or the prep. 
this makes it so easy. Anybody can do youth alpha with these new things. Thanks so much. Let's have a quick look then. Ali and Lorna, I just want to come into this just stage a little bit before I get John and Dave up. Ali and Lorna, um, Karen, who's just out here, used to be in Lorna's youth group. That's why youth ministry is important. Is that right? Yep. And I just want you to get to know these guys. These guys are here. Ali's uh, working in the west at the moment of Scotland, Lorna in Edinburgh and east uh, of Scotland. And they're here to equip you to help you do this stuff and to reach a new generation. We're looking for someone for Aberdeen in the northeast as well. We've got resources behind that for a third person a day a week. And the exciting news is beyond that. Ali's actually going to be coming to work three days a week for Alpha and two days a week with One Life an amazing discipleship organization raising up a new generation of young leaders. So Ali's going to be full-time in Scotland between Alpha and One Life, really getting behind all that we're doing, all that One Life's doing to help permission that generation. And we're going to be praying for you guys and a whole younger generation after Alan speaks this afternoon to say, God, would you do something fresh? Would you bust something out? So that's for later. Don't leave. You want to hear Alan Scott in the afternoon. But equally, we want to pray with you guys in that commissioning prayer time and pray for a move of God amongst the younger generation. So this, that's who these guys are. And we're going to pray for them later. Okay. Fantastic. And now, Celtic Connections. Tell you. Come on, guys. Now, do these guys... I'll tell you what. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you one mic between two. You can have it. Oh, that's quite good. So, so who's the dad? No, so this is the dad. This is... Oh, sorry. Dad, it's not that obvious, is, yeah. So this is John. This is Dave. Yep. Do you want to tell us one thing about yourselves? One... Uh, one interesting fact, one kind of like... I you, support West Ham. You support West Ham? Do you lead a church? Yeah, I do. You do? Is Are that you, more important than support uh, West yeah, Ham? Yeah, West okay, Ham, right. that's irrelevant uh, in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay, yeah. So you're senior pastor? Senior pastor. What in kind a, of church is that then? Large Presbyterian church. A large church. So Belfast. has it got any sort of resonance with us in Scotland, large Presbyterian church? Any what? Resonance? Resonance. Is it kind of yeah, similar in any yeah, way? Yeah. What, Presbyterian, Presbyterianism is one of the things you guys inflicted on Ireland. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And you're big on change, I believe. Yeah, if possible. Big on change. Presbyterians don't like change. They don't do change. And, and Dave, you, you're in the same church? Unfortunately, yes. So, I was going to ask how that works out. And I believe the two of you, you both like run an alpha course at Kermoney. So yeah. do you want to tell us a little bit about your alpha course? I run the, the premier alpha course at Carn Money Church. Okay. Um, it's infinitely better than the other one that's run in the autumn time. Mine is in January and is predominantly... So he's got the, the autumn one? Yeah, he's got the boring one. So We've you, got the really so exciting one. you tell us one. about the, the better course then? Yeah, um, it's run in, a, in sort of a nightclub arts venue downtown in the center of Belfast. Uh, we have lots of fun with people from all sorts of backgrounds. It's predominantly younger. Um, it's a nightclub you kind of feel sort of... Yeah, it's kind of like, it, it, it's a nice venue in the sense that it's, it's, it would be thought of as an arts venue, but they do like club nights and gigs and poetry readings and book readings and all that sort of stuff. So it works quite well for us. And so how did kind of a nice young worship leader, a guy like you, get involved with Alpha? So that's worship, these all these worship leaders like Thomas and Ali yeah. and yourself leading Alpha. How did, you, and you work for Alpha, I know as well. So how, yeah. why, why? What's so the I'm, I'm the Paul Davey of Northern Ireland, which means I talk loads and... Um, Sorry, Cheeky. Paul. Sorry, sorry. I will interrupt you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I work for Alpha, and um, I lead worship at our church. And really, kind of after a while, we realised that our January course was kind of numbers were dwindling. And I thought well, this is a real opportunity. I thought we we really should be trying to ramp up our courses each each year. And um, we were we were finishing our autumn course, which was really successful. And then there was loads of people who wanted to bring friends, and it's just not acceptable to me that you tell them actually. Well, it's 12 months till their next one. That that's that doesn't compute. So thought, well, look, we'll have a go in January. We started to talk with people. Our evening church was quite young, uh, and our morning church was kind of standard church, very you know young and old, big sort of. Um, range of people. The evening church was pretty young, and they weren't really connecting with Alpha. So we, we started you to drive to, that younger. What, yeah, Jonas, what does this has it done to the church trying to drive Alpha younger and having the second course? I know you're on the better course in the autumn. Yeah, well, that goes without saying. But you know, my course has been going for ten years. You know, and all the rest of it. But, <laughs> but I mean, basically. I mean, they, they, he's got all the cool ideas, okay? So I steal them, but we do them better than they do them. So that's how the system works. I mean, basically from the beginning, Alpha, our Alpha courses always attracted people who didn't come to church, 
they were the, the autumn course, although Dave's right, the spring course is younger. The autumn course has loads of ages in it, but it has younger people in it, okay? So it did two things. It brought a large number of people to faith who previously didn't come to church, largely de-churched rather than unchurched. But the second thing was it, it kind of changed church for us because you then, Carn Money Church is, is the largest church in the PCI, and, and it was fairly kind of comfortable where it was at. Which Your was, suburban kind of church. Yeah. So where it was at was basically the 18th century. So, uh, <laughs> and, and so it, it needed a substantial amount of change, but, but changing a large congregation who think that everything's okay is, is, is quite difficult. What Alpha did was it brought people to faith. It let them experience worship, community, witness in a, in, in a different way to church. And then they came into church. So in church, you had a, a body of people who now wanted to change, which made it much easier for me to kind of suggest to the leadership uh, that, that, that we needed to do this. So that Alpha not only changed lives, it totally changed the church. And I often say to people, actually the person whose life was most changed by our Alpha course was mine. How was that? Um, because I, th I, 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 I think that it, it kind of enabled me to see that I, when I grew up in a kind of conservative evangelical background, my dad was a minister in, in our denomination. And I suppose if I thought about the work of the Holy Spirit, I thought about revival. And revival was always something that was going to happen in years and years time and, and all the rest of it. Uh, but I, I came to a point in my life where I was hungry for the fact that if this meant anything, it needed to happen now. I suppose what Alpha actually did was taught me that it was possible to have a relationship with God in which the Holy Spirit could take control and in which things could happen. Uh, people could get healed, lives could get changed, the church could actually begin to impact society. We could become a community of people that others would want to join. And, and what, actually, what has actually happened through the years is now, in the beginning, people used to come to Alpha, then they would come to faith and come to church. Now, on the vast majority of people coming on our Alpha courses have tried church first. It's is that and because you've changed the, the church? You've because shifted. the church has changed the so much. Has shifted. So, so, so actually, it, it, it's actually easy now. It's more accessible. The worship, because of guys like him, is, is, translates much better into the generation in which we live. Mm -hmm. And so people come and check out the church first and then go on the Alpha course and come and to And faith. what has the older generation had to do to allow Dave's generation to kind of have their head, as we say here? What you have to have is have children, and then they get involved in the life of your church, and then they pester you constantly. And just when you think you've changed enough for it to be okay, they, they, they bring to your attention the fact that the change hasn't really even started yet. And, so, that, and basically, the, the, the difference about having family do that is, you know, members of your congregation do it once or twice a week. Your family do it at every mealtime, every He's in every your ear the whole day. time. Okay. It's, it's, it's just complete agony and terror. So, so Dave, what... What changes still need to happen in car money? Is it looking like you want it to look for your mates? And it's, it's getting there. It's, it's a work in progress. But then the church is always a, a work in progress. And, you know, just like, it's quite funny, we would joke all the time, you know, because dad buys really sad albums by people like Michael Card and stuff and, you know, and uh, listens to those music, those tracks and says, you know, it'd be really good to use this in church. And I'm like, dad, we will never be using that in church. And things like that start to happen. But then on the flip side, I got a 16. So what's year. your music? Come on then. What's my music? Yeah, just, uh, lots just of his, stuff. Lots okay, of stuff. Uh, that's what they all say in you. Yeah, okay, of, but the funny thing, I've got, you know, I've got a little sister who's 16. And, you know, just like when dad buys Hillsong albums or what, Worship Central albums, sorry. And, uh, you know, skips over all the loud bashy tracks, you know, to the softer songs that he likes. You, you know, my little sister loves all the bashy loud tracks, hates all the quiet stuff. So you realize actually that the transition is, is always happening. And, and I suppose if there's any change that we probably feel and I probably feel is the most important thing now, it, it's kind of addressing the culture that says, you know, we don't want, you, you know, it's not that God is telling us to fill this church. It's that God is telling this church to fill the world, you know, to go out into the world and do the stuff, not just fill the church. Mm, that sounds like a cue to bring Alan Scott up as well. This is uh, just, you can stay up just now, that's fine. And uh, Alan, you've got, you've got a couple of questions for you because we've got a Celtic connection, but you're originally from, a lot of people are originally from Scotland today. Yeah, originally from Glasgow. It's about an hour away. Whoa, uh, G word. G word. <laughs> Edinburgh. So, Alan, tell us a little bit about, about your church. Well, yeah, it's right on the north coast of Northern Ireland. It's in a. Our main street is shops on one side and then the Atlantic Ocean on the other. It's where John and Dave wish they lived in reality. <laughs> he comes, it's where you spend your summers. And our church community there is 15 years old and it's a group of people who are dreaming of ways to bring life to the wider community and doing that in all sorts of creative and innovative and, ways. And I hear you have a real passion for taking church out of the building. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? 
Yeah, we, we think something incredible happens when the church leaves the building and begins demonstrating the kingdom in the community. So a number of years ago, we, we did a thing called Healing in the Streets, and that was a wonderful structure for us to begin to engage our community. But we realized we needed to shift the culture so that everyone, every day, everywhere could begin to do that. So our, our ethos, our passion is bringing life to every industry, to every family, to every community. And I, that's what we spend our days dreaming of and, and trying to practice. Brilliant. Now, you're speaking later on this afternoon. Um, can you whet our appetites, give people a reason to stay oh for gosh, the Oh, gosh, I don't know if I talk. can. Uh, I'm, except to say, I've just found the last hour that we spent together utterly inspiring. I love that I now have 570,000 hours left to live. That's like a bonus. <laughs> claiming that. And I haven't really got that, no. Um, oh, it's for 16-year-olds. Oh, it's so disappointing. <laughs> What, what are we going to do this afternoon? We, we're going to discuss some of the changes that are coming in church. We're going to talk about the power of scattered servants, moving beyond gathered environments, and unleashing everyone every day. Uh, we're going to journey a little bit into culture and being a church that's no longer intimidated by culture and understanding that God has more in mind for us than cultural relevance, that he has in mind that we would dream dreams that shape culture and bring life to our community. And we're going to conclude the day by talking about uh, bringing dreams that shape the city. And so that's what we're going to do. And hopefully some healing and ministry and all of that good stuff thrown in. Brilliant. Thank you so much.